So hello everybody, welcome back to the Tarot Tanvi. I am Tanvi, this is my studio. These are my tarot cards that I'll be pulling towards the end of this video. So please stay with me. So before I go on and talk about what a twin flame relationship is and how to really avoid the cycle of <coughs> overgiving and chasing somebody, I would just like to say that in case you're interested in booking a personal reading with me, all my links are in the description of this episode. So please feel free to contact me. So it is said, that every soul has its counterpart. That every soul, when they reach a spiritual evolution, when they reach a, like a level of spiritual growth, they split into two parts and then they split into two bodies. And so these two souls, they go through their own lifetimes, their own journeys. And then finally, in one lifetime, they meet. And uh, like so I, I believe that they sort of meet in every lifetime. But the union of these two souls or like them coming together can only happen if these two are at the same psychological, mental, spiritual, emotional level. So this is the theoretical thing. Now theoretically when you google uh, about twin flames they also talk about certain phases like the runner chaser phase like where one person is running away and the other person is chasing and then, they, then the other person is running and then the other person is chasing them. Now, whereas this entire concept sounds very romantic and you know that two souls of, in two separate bodies trying to find each other. In with my clients uh, and everywhere, I see that this actually promotes a very toxic behavior. This actually promotes the fact that um, there is somebody else who would complete you and then only you can accomplish certain good things in life. Because there are so many people on the internet who say that it is only after you unite with your twin flame that you can raise the vibration of the earth and you can fulfill your soul mission. And because of this, I see so many mostly girls waiting for these men. And, and this is like just a general connotation that goes on. Of course, it can be the other way around or you can have any sexual orientation. Uh, I'm not going to generalize only heterosexual relationships, but this is the general thing that goes on that they keep on waiting for these people who are unavailable. But this usually stems from uh, an anxious attachment style because of their uh, childhood traumas, because probably their parents when they were kids were unavailable and they did not show them love the way that they deserved. Hence, when these children, they grow up, they begin to over romanticize relationships. They begin to over, um, uh, you know, imagine that there has to be another person who's going to give them that fulfillment and love. And because this twin flame theory, this entire theory seems so glamorous and, you know, so miraculous. It just makes them feel stuck in this chasing of another person. But even from the theoretical point of view, the main aim of you, of your spiritual evolution or you finding your purpose has to be you stepping into your own power, has to be you reclaiming your own power, be it with or without a person. So it is not that it is only after you meet with another person or you have to keep waiting for another person. There are so many people who are also saying that you don't have to wait for any person. But everyone who say that they're on a twin flame journey choose to conveniently ignore all these facts now yes so uh, i just want to clarify these things because i get a lot of questions related to twin flame um, theories and like what to do how to end this runner chaser phase but the fact is that know your worth at the end of the day if somebody is not treating you the way you feel you deserve to be treated you should not be chasing that person you should not be in that dynamic you should not be chasing a person who does not see your worth that's not an act of self-love that is not an act of helping anybody in this world you're at you know we act very selfishly when we stay in toxic relationships because th this is the kind of relationship dynamic that we teach our children and our peers yeah so let's see what we have for you let's see let's see what we have let's see oh this is so sweet okay so another card is popping up this is actually very great so this is we have the ten of cups we have the ten of coins or the ten of pentacles and then we have the empress the empress is a person who is very content in herself so again irrespective of what your sexual orientation is 
know your worth know that you deserve reciprocity that loyalty reciprocity uh, somebody giving you what you deserve and you know the amount of love that you are giving you also deserve to receive that amount of love is love love and unconditional love does not mean that you just need to keep on giving to another person and then you just you know blindly sabotage your own happiness that is not an act of love that is an act of selfishness because you sort of are baiting another person to stay in your life because you are bombing them with so much love just stop doing that and start giving that love to yourself so this is exactly what the empress energy is talking about that you deserve all the love that you give away so freely then we have the 10 of pentacles and the 10 of cups which talks about ultimate happiness because 10 of pentacles is the financial stability is like a long term happiness and 10 of cups is the emotional ful fulfillment and also a happy family life but you'll eventually approach there once you deserve you tell yourself that you deserve more love you deserve to receive love in life so that's all that i have for you today i hope that this was helpful in some way and it made some sense and i'll see you again next time bye bye take care